it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics. A couple months back, I showed you how to make the pocket prayer, and that was hugely popular. You guys have loved that video and loved being able to make the pocket prayers and give them, especially during the time we're living through right now. And the instructions inside included the four patch as well as the hourglass. And of course, it uses the pocket prayer pack, which has the pins, it has the nice cards printed on the back, and of course, the beautiful gold crosses. Well, as time has gone on, I've, I've been thinking about, you know, pocket prayer. Um, because I know the one that I have kept in my purse, naturally, when it is in my purse and my keys and my phone and just the shuffling through my purse, that paper has become a little bit tattered. And I thought, what would that be like if I truly made a pocket? Truly made a pocket prayer where I could either put the paper in the back to protect it or to truly put a prayer list. And so that's why we, I came up with the patchwork heart pocket prayer, and it's really fun doing in just very scrappy look. Um, it could be in your favorite color. And we also found with the one and a half inch strips that are called honey buns, it's a super convenient way to just jump into the project because the strips are already, already one and a half inches wide. So let me tell you how to make this. Now what will, what will be included in the download, I'll be showing you how to do the patchwork, how to create your pocket, how to assemble everything, um, that process will be, will be included. And of course, you can be sure to grab those pocket prayer packs, which have the pins, they have the crosses, as well as the cards on the back. Now, what we've also done is create an additional pattern that will have all the instructions, but what will also be included are some prayer lists. So if you want to be able to have you know, that list of people that you're praying for every day, I think we all have that, where you'll be able to write their names of who you're praying for so you don't forget somebody. Or maybe you meet somebody during your day and they're like, please pray for my brother, please pray for my father. You can just write their name down so you can be sure to include them. So we have different uh, sayings at the top of those. So that's why having the pattern, the paid pattern is great. We'll have 12 prayer lists in there including some blank ones. You can put whatever you want in there, maybe a heartfelt message. And then when you give that to somebody, they'll be able to just put that in the very back of that pocket and keep that with them forever. So let's jump into how do we make, first we'll start off with the patchwork heart. As I said, it can be very scrappy. It can be just completely different fabrics you have in your stash. Maybe fabrics you have left over from making masks or quilts or whatever you're doing. It could be a honey bun. It could be a charm pack. They all work really well. So I just grabbed purple today. I cut some strips one and a half inches wide by five. Of course, that's the size of a charm square is five inches. Just cut them very accurately. Be sure you're using a fresh blade in your rotary cutter. I always want to remind you about that because we want to have very precise piecing. So I'll put that aside for just a moment. And as you would suspect, right sides together. We'll sew a quarter inch seam allowance. And what I've done, um, I have a piece left over, is I just pressed one row to the right, the other row to the left, and then you just cut those into one and a half inch strips just like this. Again, very scrappy so that maybe no two rows are alike. Or in our case, what I did, I sewed those together and then just cut those into the one and a half inch strips. And you can see these are repeating, right? But they're still very patchwork looking. And once you sew all the rows together, I went ahead and pressed those seams open so it, it lie nice and flat. Much to cover, so I'll go ahead and skip. You, you know how to sew quarter inch seam allowances, so I'll skip right ahead to, you'll need a piece of batting as well. You wanna get a nice lower loft batting. Um, I definitely found when I was working with making these and I was trying to figure out the right process, I had some a fluffier batting that gave me just a little bit of a problem turning it through. So if you have the choice of a lower loft batting, go ahead and choose that more lower loft. So we're just going to go ahead and put this onto a piece of batting. And I have loaded a piece of purple in the, or a purple spool, and I'm just gonna stitch in the ditch. You could do something else, do whatever you want, maybe some um, stipple or whatever you wanna do. I'm gonna keep it simple, just starting with stitching in the ditch. So I'll get that quilted, and then we'll move right on to our next step of cutting out the heart.
Okay, so now we have everything quilted and ready to go. Now, if you're going to be making multiple hearts, and I just know you're going to, it's really fun to make, um, you want to go ahead and we'll put that one aside. That's our first, first uh, design here. Let me move these out of the way. Move those out of the way. It's always challenging with the space we have on the set here. So inside your pattern and in your download, you have your heart here. If you're going to be doing many of these, I wanna encourage you to go ahead and just make a template. I love to use freezer paper for that. This nice, sturdy, cut right, heavy duty freezer paper is wonderful because it's so thick. It's so sturdy. So I just put a piece of freezer paper over top of that. If you need a light box, go ahead and use that and go ahead and trace on the line with a permanent marker and then go ahead and cut out directly on the line. Now this is the freezer paper. Um, you can use also just thicker paper. It doesn't have to be freezer paper. If, you, if it doesn't have the kind of more adhesive side, you can simply place that here and draw a line around. But because I do have the freezer paper, I'm gonna go ahead and take advantage of that adhesive characteristic of it. And what's fun about that is once I, now I don't have to worry about holding that when I go ahead and trace around um, that shape. And I can peel that off and use it again and again and again. So I love it. Um, I use freezer paper anytime I'm doing turn edge applique and I wanna turn that edge under because I just love that rigid edge. Gives me a nice, clean, crisp edge to turn. Now notice I didn't just go ahead and cut because I don't wanna cut into my template by mistake. If you feel like you're not going to, go ahead and just cut around your template. But I did go ahead and just do that because I don't wanna take that chance. And notice how I can just use this again and again for more. So it's really nice. Once you make the template, it's really a, just a one-time thing. I've got my thicker scissors here. You guys know I always have high scissors on the set. Anytime I'm cutting backing or something thicker, I grab for um, either my Bordeaux Clover scissors or the Karen K. Buckley scissors. Hey, purple's the theme of the day it looks like. So I'm gonna grab these today. Go ahead and cut out directly on the line. And you know, we love to, while I'm cutting this out, we would love to have you join the conversation and as you're watching the, this video, I know that you're already thinking about who you wanna make these for. And we would love to hear who that is. We would love to hear who, who's on your heart, literally, that you're like, oh, I cannot wait to make this for this person. Or, hey, I know this person's going through that. Or maybe someone recently lost a spouse. Or you just don't know what that could be. Um, so we would love to, you know, just just proclaim their name and put them in the comments that, hey, I'm gonna be making this for you know, X, Y, Z, and we would love to, to just know that. And I just speak all that goodness of what you plan to do for that person is wonderful. So thank you. Thank you for joining the conversation. We love to hear from you. Once that's done, we know we're going to need a backing, right? We've already talked about on the back of our patchwork, we have a backing fabric and we also have a pocket. So this is where the charm squares are so nice. And if you don't have charm squares, no problem. Still cut a five inch square for your packing and take one of your five inch squares out of your charm pack or out of your stash. Go ahead and cut your pocket fabric to four and a half inches, exactly four and a half inches for your pocket. Again, uh, five for the backing. So let's go ahead and just jump right into that pocket. So we've cut this one to four and a half and we will fold that on the diagonal and give a good press. Now, if you love to add decorative stitching to projects, you have a chance to do that here. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. On the back of this pocket here, you could put a really beautiful stitch here. It's definitely an area you're going to be reaching into and looking at. So why not take advantage of maybe a beautiful decorative stitch you have on your machine or maybe some pretty thread. So I know that you may not have those stitches if you're sewing on a more basic machine. So I'm just gonna sew a straight stitch today. Nothing fancy, but just know it's a really fun opportunity if you enjoy that type of extra embellishment. Okay, our pocket is sewn. That 
nice rounded edge. So what we'll do, this is our backing, there's our pocket. So now, when we lay this down here, I want you to note something. Notice how the pocket needs to come enough below that V so that when you sew your heart closed, that you don't accidentally sew that pocket closed. So you need to make sure that that pocket is at least about three eighths beneath where you're going to sew, maybe a quarter at the, no closer than a quarter. So I could certainly scoot this down here and maybe a little bit too, you know what, I think no matter what, you're going to be safe. But I just wanted to point that out in the event you really got that down there and maybe sewed a really healthy quarter of an inch, maybe even beyond that, you could inadvertently sew that pocket close. Why I know that is I already did that when I was making one of these. I just got a little bit too close. So I just wanted to mention that. Okay, everything is lined up. We know we're well away from that. This is when I'm going to use those flower pins, flower head pins from Clover, because they're just a little bit too much fabric for me to use my normal patchwork pins. I pieced things together. When I was sewing my strips together, you can certainly use the patchwork pins. But when you're dealing with bulkier la uh, layers being put together, go ahead and use those pins. They're just made to go through an additional bulk. Now we'll go ahead and we're gonna start, oh, we could probably start right about, probably right about in here. And we're gonna sew a quarter of an inch. If you have a needle down uh, option on your machine, select that, because once we get to the point of that heart, we'll pivot. We'll come back the next direction. Again, down here, pivot. We're gonna leave an opening about right there on that side. I don't like to leave openings on curves if I can avoid that because they're harder to close on a curve. So I'm gonna, I can even mark that. That way I don't inadvertently sew past that spot. We'll leave that opening. And you know, as you know, uh, the more bulky that is, the harder it's, it is to turn to the opening. So go ahead and reinforce here, as well as when you, where you end, and then we'll get our project turned through once it's all stitched down. We'll go ahead and cut that out. And there's enough of the kind of scraps that if you want to make the other version of the pocket prayer, the original version, you'll have that. You know, it's kind of fun. Sometimes when you get ready, done with a project, you're like, what do I do with these scraps? Like, what do I do? And one thing that I thought would be really fun is if you're going to make pocket prayers, maybe a, in a sewing group, um, you save your scraps, they save their scraps, they all come together, and people can truly make it so scrappy that it's part of her quilt and his quilt and my quilt, and it's just this really neat community thing. I think there's a lot of opportunities to do things and to make the pocket prayers, both, both styles for people, not only in our family, but in our community as well. Um, so one thing you can do is go ahead and give a little snip anywhere you feel like it'd be nice to relieve a little bit of the pressure when you do turn. And you can be sure I'll be grabbing for my point turner as I turn this through, trying to get those curves nice and rounded as well as that point. So now we go ahead and we will just begin to push that through. Now, as I'm working this out, one of the things about the original pocket prayer was that the uh, cross is inside. And as you can see on the ones that I did here with the heart, I put the cross on the outside because it's so beautiful. I love being able to actually see it. So now, once we get this turned through, before we close it, you have to make a decision. Are you going to put the cross on the inside or are you going to put it on the outside the way that is shown here? So that'll be your decision. If you wanna use the card, what the card says is, this pocket prayer quilt was made especially for you to slip in your pocket throughout the day when your fingers touch the cross inside the quilt. Be mindful of God's love and grace for you. Keep it as a tangible symbol of God's peace. So if you think you're gonna put these in back here, maybe pin it and keep it secure, you might wanna go ahead 
to stay true to what's on the card to go ahead and put the cross on the inside. So I just wanted to, it's that decision time where you can decide what you wanna do with that. So what the cool thing about the point turner, as you saw, I just worked out these beautiful curves with this, but then the other point, uh, the other end is the point, and I get to work out that pointed part of the heart as well. So I, I just love that Clover products really do think through all of the things. All right, so let's get that warmed up. The first thing I wanna do whenever I have to close an opening is I like to go ahead and just get everything pressed out so I understand what, what do I have here? Is everything nice and curved? Do I wanna make any corrections? Do I wanna turn it right back so the outside is on the outside and make any corrections? I'm happy with these curves. If you had any issue, pop it right back out, do a seam rip, and just fix it before proceeding, okay. I think I'm happy with what I'm seeing. So now what we'll do, let's go ahead. I wanna bring this so it's more front and center. Some people can have a little bit of struggles trying to close an opening. The easiest way, we all already know that we've sewn a quarter inch seam allowance. So take your time and just know that the whole goal here is when it's tucked under, and I should have grabbed some Wonder Clips. I can already see that that's, that's my go-to that's currently missing, but that's okay. I think we can work it out. The goal is, when I, when I check it out, can you see where the opening would be? And if you can say, well, there's a little bit of a bump there, go ahead and finesse that just a little bit more until you can't tell that anymore. Now, the style of of uh, the heart patchwork that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually put the prayer list because I do have a lot of people that I'm praying for and I'm gonna be using the prayer list that's inside the paid pattern for mine. So I'm gonna have my cross on the outside. If you were gonna have that on the inside, what you might think about doing is starting here, sewing most of the way around and in the very end pop that cross in and, and go ahead and close it, otherwise, you need to keep track of where this thing is and make sure it's not drifting into your seam line because you could obviously break a needle and potentially damage your machine. So let's go ahead, we'll go to the sewing machine. I'll keep my purple thread in there because again, we, it's gonna be visible. And we'll sew about an eighth of an inch all the way around our heart to go ahead and close that and do a nice little top stitch on this whole little heart here. Okay, fun stuff. I love being able to use leftovers. You know, the fun, we love making quilts. And um, when I'm done with a quilt project, I have this stash of fabric and it stresses me out. <laughs> is anybody else out there in the same as me? I'm like, what do I do with it? Like, I can't throw it away. That doesn't make sense to me. I often gift it to somebody else. But this is a nice way to be able to gift some of it and use just your scraps because it makes the best scrappy projects. It's really fun. All right, so we have our heart. And now I thought it would be really pretty. And what I've done, it's, you know, these decorative stitching, this decor the razzle and the dazzle, the wonderful threads, they have a specific job. You know, their job is to add sparkle and excitement whether you're doing hand embroidery, or in this case, just to tie a bow. So I went ahead and grabbed our, um, using the, sh I think these are the chenille needles here, and just threaded that. If you have any problem, go ahead and use Thread Magic. That'll kind of tone that down, make it a little bit easier to thread that needle. And I just pop that through. I think I came in from the back, actually. Nope, I know I came in from the front. Just like that. And I know I came right back up, right above it. And there's a nice little uh, opening, a loop on top of that, beautiful cross. And make, make your thread longer than you need. So you have plenty of space to definitely tie a double knot and be able to make a bow. 
So you don't want that to come off. Okay, if you have any trouble making loops, let me show you that. I've, <laughs> I've, so, I've made bows for so long, sometimes I do it without, without even thinking. And people are like, how'd you do that? So let me go a little bit slower so you can see it. So I'm right-handed. I just make the little bunny ear, as my daughter calls it, loop around, tuck underneath. Oh, I, my hands got in the way of that. Make my little bunny ear, loop around, and I just push that through. And it's bigger than I want initially, but if I go ahead and tie that again like that, now it's not going to come undone, and that's pretty. And you could leave it long. I went ahead and trimmed mine up just a touch, just because I didn't want it to be catching on things in my purse. And isn't that beautiful? And like I said, with the Pocket Prayer Pack, you automatically get these. So you have the option to use them or not. If you want to go ahead and use that and put that in the back, you can put that in there and also just secure that with that gold pin so it's not going to come out. Or if you choose, you know, like, no, I definitely want that prayer list in there then be sure to grab the paid pattern as that's not part of the download and you'll be able to do uh, write your list or just write a heartfelt message, be able to put that in there and be able to give that to someone who I know will just really cherish that the way I cherished my original pocket prayer that I was given all these years ago. So thank you so much for hanging in there with me for this longer video. I know being able to just share, you know, just these amazing handmade gifts with heartfelt messages really brings a lot of joy and a lot of hope for people. So be sure to grab all the things you need and you know start making that list of who could use one of those and really just bless them with all of the things that you create. Now tag a friend so maybe you know somebody that might want to make those as well and if you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel just go ahead and do that now and that way you'll never miss out on a future shabby video. I'll see you next time.